Hi guys, today I will be upgrading this 2200 milliamp hour power bank to a 9900 milliamp hour power bank. I bought this nice pink power bank at the action for 4 euros, which is very cheap for such a good power bank, and it really, really is good. Last time I checked, it was capable of delivering almost 2200 milliamp hours. So, I bought four 9,900 milliamp hour 18650 style batteries from eBay for five dollars um, to upgrade this power bank. When I reviewed the 300,000 milliamp hour power bank in one of my other YouTube videos, I already knew that 300,000 milliamp hours in such a small power bank was impossible, unless they've put a really small nuclear reactor inside. And this is the same case with these batteries, 9,000 milliamp, 9,900 milliamp hours in such a small battery, yeah, that, that is not possible. And I really don't think they put a small reactor inside. So all major brands like Samsung, Panasonic, LG, etc., which sell these type of batteries, won't go any higher than 2400 milliamp hours with these. So why can Chinese eBay sellers put four times more power in it than those manufacturers can? Let's put that to the test. So the first thing to notice about these batteries is their weight. They are extremely light. 24 grams to be exact, which makes 96 grams for the four of them. This power bank weighs 65 grams, including its case and its charging circuit. So, yeah, let's see what this, this battery has to offer. Let's see if I can get it in focus. There we go. Discharge rate and no memory effect. Low reoccurring operation cyst. Wait, what? I think my English is just not good enough to understand that. Um, short circuit and overcurrent protection. A protection circuit inside this battery? Would that explain its low weight? Probably not. It's probably just another shameless lie. Sheaf, sheaf leaf around 10 years. Okay, en environmental, en envi environmental. Uh, Envy Romantol friendly. Okay. Do not dispose in fire or heat. Okay, I'm going to try that. Do not puncture, damage and disassemble. I'm going to try that too. And do not mix fresh batteries with used batteries. Well, that's the first sensible text on this battery. If you mix, mix fresh batteries with used batteries in a charger which is, which is not capable of measuring the charge state per battery, the charge state per battery, uh, you can actually overcharge the fresh battery and damage it. But I thought it stated that it had a overcharge protection inside. So why can I not mix these then? Or is the overcharge protection a lie? Right, and here it is again. Rechargeable battery with re-discharging protection circuit. Protection circuit. So will it actually protest when it gets overcharged? Really? What's it gonna do? Will it gather all the other 18650 style batteries and protest against its overcharging? Crazy stuff, these batteries. So, I already cracked open one of my other power banks. And it's full and fully charged its battery. I'm going to discharge this power bank uh, by using two large resistors, which I soldered to this USB cable. Um, and this setup draws about 860 milliamps. And so this power bank should be fully discharged between two and three hours. I'm going to try to record its discharge process by making a time lapse video. Um, if that fails, <laughs> you should probably take my word for it. So, let's see. Here we go.
So here I am <coughs> back again with a fully discharged power bank with its or original battery. This power bank managed to deliver 1160 milliamp hours, which is not so good actually. I've seen it perform better, way better. So let's see if this 9900 milliamp hour battery does a better job. So let's hook this meter up to the discharge power bank. And as you can see, it, it still does light up, but you cannot draw any more, more current from it. it. It will disconnect. And uh, yeah, and I'm not going to show you it like this. Let's hook it up to this charge power bank. And so you can actually look at the results. Let's take it a little closer to the camera. Uh, it took 78 minutes to fully discharge, uh, 1 hour and 18 minutes. and. 1160 milliamp hours. So um, during discharging, <laughs> I put the resistors in this class of water um, to prevent them from dissolving themselves uh, because they will generate a huge amount of heat and they will just fall off. Um, I used a clean class, a clean class wa uh, water, uh, clean water, and for some reason it started some form of electrolysis uh, so this is what it looks like right now it's it's really really a giant mess it's dirty this one looks terrible this one is still clean of course that's what electrolysis does um, yeah so I hope I can you still use it for the next test although I think it won't last that long as this uh, this one did and uh, yeah I'm going to use, of course, a new, a new class and new water. Um, yeah, so let me desolder the battery. Let's put this out of the way. And then I'm going to solder this feather light unit to this circuit. That went very easy. But oh, this is way, way heavier. <laughs> That's a terrible difference. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it on the scale actually. I'll be right back. So here I am back again. And this battery actually weighs 42 grams. 42! <laughs> the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Um, it's almost the double <laughs> as this battery which claims to have four times the capacity. So put that out of the way. Put uh, where did I put my flux pan? Clean it first a little bit. A little bit of flux on the top. That's probably a little bit too much. One end. Now comes the little bit more difficult end. Let's see if I can clamp it in between. I should probably put my soldering iron back before I do this kind of stuff. Of course, the other way around.
terrible soldering quality like this but it will have to do very nice and hot <laughs> so, yeah that's tight enough so I believe I saw a blue light uh, yes it works 5.23 volts um, yeah so I will fully charge it and then uh, do the same test and see how much this yellow light will be able to deliver my guess is that this circuit will disconnect around the 500 milliamps or something Let's reset it. And there we go. I'm going to charge it first and then do the test. So I'll be back in a moment. So the all new and improved upgraded wonderful Chinese power bank of wonders is actually charging. But I forgot one, forgot one thing to actually test. The batteries. So let's get a meter and see. 20 volt DC. Size of camera, that's 4.08, 4.05, 4.10. No, that's not bad actually. I expected a little. Oh, I put that sticker on there. Let's see what it's currently charging at. Yeah, that, and that is a fault of my meter. It's actually 4.21. No, see if I can. That's, this is not not good. I should really have to get a better meter sometimes. 4.2032. 4. Yeah, 4.33. This is actually a terrible meter. Well, it was not not cheapest or something which is yes I should really get a fluke or something 4.34 no that's probably almost fully charged yeah so I'll let it charge uh, until it's full and then do the same decharging process in a time lapse again So, back again, after fully discharging this yellow piece of junk. And as you might have noticed in the time lapse, after about 11 minutes of discharging, the protection circuit of the power bank cut off the power. Because this cell dropped below the cutoff voltage. And then, because there was no load on the battery anymore, the voltage went back up again to a point at which the protection circuit found it acceptable to draw current from the battery again, and then it went back on. And this process repeated quite a few times. Well, at the point of the first cutoff, the battery level de delivered a total of 164 milliamp hours. 164 milliamp hours. That's less than 2% of the promised capacity. And also even less than I expected. Absolutely ridiculous. And including all the cutoffs, uh, this battery managed to deliver a total of 296 milliamp hours. Well, uh, because I could not believe it, I also tried a more modest load of about 350 milliamps. And with this load, uh, there were only three cutoffs, and the battery was capable of putting out 292 milliamp hours, uh, which pr proves this display. And it took about 50 minutes to reach. The, uh, the, the full uh, discharge. Um, I even tried this other battery, um, which of course did about the same. So, this is absolute garbage. How can these ch Chinese sellers get away with this? Uh, well, at least the battery did not protest. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. So, I hope this video saves someone from actually buying these batteries. And in one of my next videos, I will find four different ways to kill all four of these batteries. <laughs> that will be fun. So, thanks for watching.